The movie begins with Augustine living alone in the Barbu Observatory, taking his medications and doing dialysis. We see flashbacks of the apocalypse that happened three weeks ago. Most of the world has been destroyed by a radioactive meltdown. Citizens are trying to get away in helicopters, but Augustine remained behind. A mother came looking for her daughter, and another woman told her that she left early. The movie takes us back many years, showing a young Augustine sharing his study on which other planets could be suitable for people to live on. He points out that with so many stars in our galaxy, each having its own planets, it's likely that at least one of these planets could support life. He introduces K-23, a moon of Jupiter that hasn't been discovered before, which is unique because it's heated from the inside due to volcanic activity, not by the sun. After the speech, Jean approaches Augustine to ask about the realism of his research. She asks Augustine a pointed question about his work, questioning the balance between reality and fiction in his search for habitable planets. In the present, Augustine wakes up in pain. He took a pill and went to his desk. He uses the center's equipment to check if any space missions looking for planets where people can live are still going on. He finds out that one mission, called Ether, is still active. Sole, one of the astronauts on the Ether mission, has awoken gasping after a dream that she'd been left behind on the planet that they were exploring, called K-23. She's also pregnant. She tries to establish communication with Earth. She sends out a message, hoping for a response, but hears nothing back. The crew discusses the technical details and realizes it's been three weeks since their last contact with Earth, which is unusual. They check all possible reasons for the communication failure, including technical glitches and natural disturbances, but can't find a solution. Soli also mentions that she couldn't reach the colony flight that was supposed to head to K-23. In the movie, Augustine is alerted by a smoke alarm and rushes to find a fire. He manages to put out the fire and then notices a young girl hiding in the facility. He tries to contact someone to come and pick her up, but he can't reach anyone. The girl doesn't speak but when she draws a picture of a flower, Augustine understands that her name is Iris. Augustine attempts to communicate with the Aether spacecraft, but doesn't receive any response. While he's working on this, the young girl, Iris, comes into the lab and looks at the screen showing Aether. He explains to her that Aether is returning to Earth, and he needs to warn them about the situation on the planet. Iris came with a pillow and a blanket, and he took her to another room, telling her that this one was his room. After a while, she comes back and sleeps on the floor of his room. Augustine tried to fix the communication problem by changing the position of the antenna, but it didn't work. However, the antenna isn't strong enough for him to establish communication, and his efforts are unsuccessful. Gordon logs a voice memo summarizing the situation. He mentions that despite their efforts, they can't contact the K-23 colony flight or Mojave on any frequency. He believes the fault might be with their equipment, but they've checked everything and found no issues. He notes that the crew remains calm, even though they're breaking protocols to try and make contact with other countries. Gordon praises the crew's spirit as they near the end of their two-year mission to K-23 which has been successful in answering most of their questions about the planet's potential as a new home. However, he ends with a lingering question. Why is it so quiet? Iris shows up while Augustine is doing his dialysis. She comes and sits next to him and turns off the light. They saw a bright star and he told her the importance of a star, explaining that it's the most significant star in the sky and it can help her find her way if she ever gets lost. In another flashback in the movie, Jean and Augustine are in a relationship, but Augustine is distant and focused solely on his work, neglecting his personal life. When Jean tells him she's not pregnant after a scare, he barely reacts. She confronts him about his lack of response and his inability to balance his work and his personal life. Jean expresses her sadness over how Augustine's obsession with exploration and discovering new worlds is causing him to miss out on his own life. She ultimately decides to leave him, suggesting that it's for the best. In the current timeline of the movie, Augustine informs Iris about a stronger antenna located farther north at Lake Hazen, a weather station protected by a mountain range. He suggests that the airspace there might be clearer, increasing their chances of making contact. However, he warns her that reaching the antenna will be a long and challenging journey. 
Augustine prepares for the trip by packing his dialysis machine, and together they set out into the Arctic cold, hoping to find the station and establish communication. On Aether, Maya is looking at her family talking, and she sees Sanchez. She asked him to come in and told him about her family. Mitchell is watching a movie. Sully and Gordon are playing cards. Suddenly, the alarm goes off. The team finds out that their spacecraft has gone off course. They quickly spring into action, trying to determine the extent of their deviation and how to correct it. The autopilot has deactivated, causing them to drift further off course. The team discusses the problem with navigation and decides to plot a course through an unmapped and risky territory to stop the drifting. They use the beacon left behind at K-23 as a reference point to build a new course, with Soli providing exact numbers on the beacons and pulse, and Maya assisting Sanchez with the course design. The urgency is clear as they work to correct their trajectory while continuing to drift. Augustine and Iris set up camp for the night. Augustine reassures Iris that the air is safe, and that they're in a secure spot for the time being. He told her they both have to rest. The next day, Augustine and Iris come across a crashed aircraft with the pilot dead inside. As he navigates through the wreckage, he discovers a man who's alive but critically injured. The dying man requests Augustine to end his suffering, and Augustine fulfills his wish. In further flashbacks, it's revealed that Jean did have a daughter, whom she raises on her own. When Augustine finds them, he asks if the daughter knows about him. Jean responds that if Augustine wants their daughter to know about him, he should take the initiative to introduce himself. On the Aether mission, Maya performs an ultrasound on Sole, who reveals to Gordon that they're expecting a girl. They discuss their surprise and excitement about the news, considering names for their daughter. Augustine and Iris find a trailer to spend the night. Augustine reminisces about someone from his past referring to Iris's drawing. He encourages Iris to share something about her life. He then asks Iris to ask him a question, to which she responds, Did you love her? When Augustine wakes up, he discovers that the trailer is filling with water. He quickly rescues Iris, but then the trailer and their vehicle sink into the ice, along with the dialysis machine. Augustine and Iris take shelter in an ice cave and consume the little food that they have left. Augustine tries to cheer Iris up by promising her a variety of food options, like pizza and cheeseburgers, once they reach Lake Hazen. During their journey, Augustine and Iris get caught in a blinding icy windstorm. In the chaos, Augustine loses sight of Iris and hears wolves nearby. He fires a warning shot to scare them off and desperately calls out for Iris, but he can't find her and collapses to the ground. In his weakened state, he has a vision of Jean, but when he looks again, it's Iris. Relieved, he hugs her and they continue their journey. They finally find the other station. In space, Mitchell checks in with Gordon and congratulates him on the upcoming arrival of his baby girl. He suggests naming the baby Hyacinth after his own mother, explaining that it's a flower. Sully finally starts receiving a signal at the new station and establishes communication with Augustine. She expresses relief at making contact and asks for information about why they can't communicate with NASA. Augustine begins to inform Sully about the catastrophic events that have occurred on Earth, but the transmission is patchy and Sully struggles to hear his explanation. While this was going on, their alarm went off. The spaceship is hit by meteorites while traveling through unknown space. The crew tries to figure out the source of the problem and avoid the meteorites, but it's hard to see in the dark. Sully tries to contact Lake Hazen for help, but the communication is shaky. They survive the meteor, but the ship is damaged. Sully informs the crew that they've lost communications and radar. Despite the setback, they remain hopeful and begin assessing the damage and planning repairs. They're determined to fix the radar and communication system. The crew determines that a spacewalk is needed to fix the communications and radar. Maya and Sully are chosen for the task, with Gordon accompanying them to assist. During the spacewalk, the crew repairs the radar and communication systems. As they finish, they're hit by more meteorites. Everyone survives, but Maya notices blood inside of her helmet. Gordon quickly gets Maya inside the airlock, and they wait for it to depressurize to help her. 
Meanwhile, Sanchez rushes to get a med kit. When they finally do, they take Maya's helmet off, and hundreds of drops of blood float out. Sanchez puts pressure on the wound while Soli tries to talk to her and keep her conscious. Despite their efforts, Maya does not survive. As Mitchell guides the spacecraft closer to Earth, the crew's view reveals a devastating sight. Large swaths of the planet are engulfed in smoke and destruction. They observe Earth's condition through signals received from the old Astron satellite telescope. Soli, back at the communications, manages to establish contact with Earth, where Augustine is struggling without his dialysis machine. He told her that the only areas safe for survival are underground, but even those are only temporary solutions. Most of the crew is in favor of returning to K-23 after Augustine's revelation about Earth's unlivable conditions. However, Mitchell, who has a family, insists on going home. Despite the dangers and uncertainties, Mitchell is determined to return to Earth, emphasizing the original mission's goal of going to K-23 and then heading back home. Augustine told them that there are no safe areas left on Earth. The Ether crew receives a transmission from Mitchell's wife, informing her that she and their children are being asked to evacuate due to the deteriorating conditions on Earth. She expresses her love for Mitchell and lets him know where they're going, as she won't be able to contact him anymore. Mitchell tells Gordon that he understands Gordon's decision to go back to K-23. Mitchell decides to take a re-entry pod to return to Earth to find his family. Sanchez informs Mitchell that the re-entry pod requires two pilots, and he volunteers to accompany Mitchell. He reveals that his own daughter died when he was four years old, and he had come to think of Maya as a daughter. He expresses his desire to take Maya home. They said bye to the team and left. In a final communication before losing contact due to an ionization blackout, Soli thanks Augustine for his work and influence, revealing that he'd worked with her mother, Jean Sullivan, and had inspired her to join the space program. Augustine realizes that Soli is his daughter, and she introduces herself as Iris Sullivan, or Soli for short. Soli describes the beauty of the colony site on K-23, comparing it to the mountains of Colorado with crisp air and vibrant colors. Augustine imagines being on the planet with Iris. The communication is lost before he can respond. Soli and Gordon realize they're the only ones left on the ether and begin planning their course back to K-23, carrying the weight of their life and the uncertain future that lies ahead. Make sure to click that video that's on screen now to binge watch more movie recaps. Go grab your favorite snacks and get ready for another awesome movie. Remember to like this video, comment down below, and subscribe to our channel for more movie recaps.